year, construction will begin on the West Reservoir. The parkland's restoration will take several more years. It's a project that will bring better water quality, more recreation opportunities, a better environment, and more jobs to the City of Angels. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. The parkland's restoration phase of the project will be part of the L.A. River revitalization plan. The reservoirs will serve all of L.A., but primarily the areas of downtown and near the zoo. New federal grants could equal a big boost for aerospace and manufacturing in our region. As Gilreus reports, Southern California receives special consideration to compete for money thanks to an effort co-led by USC. L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti congratulating his partners at the University of Southern California. They've secured rights to compete for grants that could be a home run for Southern California aerospace and manufacturing. We're there at the plate and we're swinging for the fences. And today's announcement is the result of us being loud and clear in Washington that we're serious about jobs here in Los Angeles. President Obama is setting aside $1.3 billion to kickstart aerospace and manufacturing in the U.S. His office has selected Southern California to be among 12 U.S. regions eligible to compete for grants. The selection follows months of lobbying from the office of L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti and USC. I'm glad we won. Yeah. <laughs> now we can really get on with uh, the work, the work we all want to do. The city of L.A. and USC are part of a consortium made up of over 80 organizations, universities, businesses, government, stretching from Ventura to San Diego counties. Partners like Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena could apply for money to enhance robotic space exploration while L.A. community colleges could use the grants to boost workforce training programs in advanced manufacturing, something the mayor strongly supports. I want to make sure that Los Angeles is ready for the jobs and the economy of the future. In hopes of taking the region's job opportunities to the moon and beyond. At USC, Gil Reyes for L.A. This Week. Other regions selected to compete for grants include Chicago, Milwaukee, and Portland, Oregon. And the mayor is also setting his sights on making Los Angeles a leader in the tech field. The city kicked off its first Internet Technology Forum at City Hall. Anna Marcos has more. City leaders are inviting cyber nerds to start hacking. Not long ago, the term hacker held a wholly negative kind of connotation. Here today we are in City Hall and we're encouraging you to hack. Your job is also to bother us, to prod us, to poke us, to disrupt us and to shake things up. This was the first ever Tech LA 2014 forum. As part of the event, Mayor Eric Garcetti hosted a so-called hackathon. The city is opening up its government data to Angelinos with the goal of partnering with them to create new technologies. We know Los Angeles is the best platform for innovation. The highest rate of entrepreneurs in the country, more than one out of 200 residents. We know it's the most diverse place on the face of the earth, the best geography, the best weather, the most incredible intellectual and creative capital. Uh, but now it's time for government to do its part. Think about the hundreds or even thousands of companies who are using open government data today. You've got companies like Zillow and Trulia who are helping you make better informed choices as you buy your home. Students work together to come up with functional apps for everything from improving their communities to encouraging more civic engagement. Prizes for best apps ranged from $1,000 to $3,000, awarded by such sponsors as Google and the I Am Angel Foundation. We want to make sure that our young people see their potential in technology careers, that they're not just playing games, but they're coding games. They're not just on Snapchat, but they're building the next Snapchat. We need you. This city needs your talent. The city needs your imagination, and the city needs your creativity. L.A. was reportedly the birthplace of the Internet. City leaders are now doing everything they can to keep it the leader in the cyberspace frontier. I'm Anna Marcos for L.A. This Week. In case you're wondering, it was at UCLA in 1969 where it was believed that a student typed the first message on what was the precursor to the modern Internet. Luxury lofts, new restaurants, and public transportation are all helping to reinvent downtown L.A. into a thriving and livable community. Rasha Goel takes us to the Reinventors Award, where some of those responsible for the transformation were recognized. 
It's taken over a decade, but downtown Los Angeles has gone from gritty to glitzy. With new housing, entertainment facilities, and more public transportation options, downtown was recognized by Dwell Magazine as America's most successfully reinvented metropolis. Downtown really was not a place that everybody thought, oh, I can't wait to move downtown. Like you would say, can't wait to move to downtown San Francisco or Chicago or New York or Boston. Well, now you can say that. Four honorees, including the LA City Council, were recognized for their contribution in reinventing downtown LA. Faye Washington, president and CEO of YWCA Greater Los Angeles, was honored as well. The new seven-story YWCA building on Olive Street serves 1,200 disadvantaged youth, providing not only a place to live, but schooling and job placement. My dream came true. Just to see those kids walk in and out of that facility is just a pure joy to me. Honoree Klein Financial Corporation was recognized for bringing upscale housing to downtown. Robert Klein's company develops luxury apartments such as this one in downtown Los Angeles called Met Lofts and provides an affordable component, giving everyone an opportunity to be able to live in downtown LA. We reserve at least 20% of our units to provide a step up to families working to secure gracious living. And there's no question, downtown is the place to be. Officials say in 1999, there were 18,000 people living downtown. Today, there are 54,000 and growing. In Los Angeles, I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. Carol Schatz, CEO of the Central City Association, was named Mother of Reinvention for bringing together individuals and companies to turn downtown into a vital and thriving community. Closing a loophole in the city's attempt to shut down illegal pot shops. $50,000 in reward money is paid out to a tipster in a murder case. And Congressman Henry Waxman gets a proper send-off in City Hall. These stories and more in City Beat. <laughs> It appears that a list of potentially illegal medical marijuana dispensaries operating in the city was not shared with those in the city responsible for shutting down such shops. The issue was discussed during a city council committee meeting recently. The list in question belongs to the Office of Finance. It's of pot shops registered to pay taxes to the city. Out of the nearly 1,000 dispensaries on the list, more than 800 registered with the city after the September 2007 cutoff date approved by voters under Prop D, aimed at limiting the city's pot shops. Councilman Paul Krikorian has asked finance officials to provide the list to the police department and the city attorney's office for enforcement purposes. The city council often offers reward money in hopes of solving murders, kidnappings, hit and runs, and other crimes. But seldom do we hear of that reward money being claimed. But Councilmember Bernard Parks' office announced that a $50,000 reward payment was awarded to someone who came forward with a tip on a suspect that eventually helped solve the 2011 murder of Alonzo Esther. The suspect, Dennis Brown, has been sentenced to 16 years in state prison for the killing. Parks released a statement saying, The awarding of this reward proves that if you know anything regarding a crime, please call the authorities. These rewards do get paid out. Lovers of public transportation, listen up. The Board of Airport Commissioners has approved new flyaway bus service to and from LAX for Santa Monica and Hollywood. The buses from Santa Monica will be non-stop to LAX, located at the Santa Monica Civic Center. Service is expected to begin mid-July. The Hollywood Flyaway service will be located on the east side of Vine Street, half a block south of Hollywood Boulevard, and will make one stop in both directions at the Metro Expo light rail station at La Brea. The Hollywood service is expected to begin in mid-September. One-way fares for both flyaway bus routes will be $8. The LA City Council honored retiring Congress member Henry Waxman during a special council presentation at City Hall. Waxman is completing his 20th term in Congress. To recognize him for his contributions as a public servant, council members Paul Koretz, Mike Bonin, and Bob Blumenfield named Friday, June 13, 2014 as Henry Waxman Day in the city of Los Angeles.
I am a born, bred, lifelong resident of L.A., and I've had the great distinction of being able to uh, represent our city in Washington, D.C., so this recognition means a lot to me. And to have a Henry Waxman Day at, at City Hall is a, a great tribute. Cutting down on pollution, finding funding for transportation projects in L.A., and the Affordable Care Act are a few of what Waxman says are his proudest accomplishments. Two graduating students recently received a big surprise. This after surviving a fatal bus crash on their way to Torah College. Rasha Goel has more. For banning high school students Karen Duarte and Jonathan Gutierrez, this graduation is one they may never forget. The two are survivors of the Humboldt bus crash in April of this year that left 10 people dead, including five high school seniors from the Southland. Students were on their way to a college tour at Humboldt State University when their bus collided head-on with the FedEx delivery truck on Interstate 5 in Orland, California. Thankfully, thankfully, they survived and they and did not let the crash impede their goal of going to college. Duarte and Gutierrez think they're receiving their diplomas, but they're leaving with a surprise from Councilmember Joe Buscaino and the nonprofit organization ShareFest. And we are making a commitment to you and offering and presenting with them a scholarship of $5,000 each so that you ensure that you fulfill your dream. The audience responds with cheers and applause. Both students will be attending Humboldt State University in the fall. I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. In this week's list of things to do, an early Independence Day event, Latino and Asian food fusion, and an exotic animal show for the whole family. Kick off the Independence Day holiday early at the Port of L.A. with a visit to the 6th annual Cars and Stripes Forever Car Show on Friday, June 27th from 5 to 10 p.m. It takes place at Swinford Street and Harbor Boulevard in San Pedro. In addition to more than 100 classic cars on display, the free event will feature live music, a beer garden, food trucks, free rides on the red car, and dancing water shows at the Fanfare Fountains. Fireworks start at 9.20 p.m. Go to lawaterfront.org for details. Food Fusion takes center stage on Saturday, June 28th at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, otherwise known as La Plaza. Asian influence and Latin American cuisine dating back to the 1560s will be examined by Art Bites' Maite Gomez Rejon in Chino Latino Food Fusion from noon to 3 p.m. at La Plaza, which is located at 501 North Main Street downtown. Participants will have an opportunity to sample foods and take part in a docent-led tour of Chinese American Museum's L.A. Heat exhibit, which examines the impact of sriracha and tapatio hot sauces in Los Angeles. Admission to Food Fusion is free for CAM and La Plaza members, $5 per person for all others. Go to LAPCA.org for details. And on Sunday, June 29th, the Skirball Cultural Center is holding its Zoo to You event in its family amphitheater. You and your kids will get to sing along with performers, dance to music from around the world, and rub wings, scales, and claws with live exotic animals. There is one show at noon and another one at 2 p.m. Children must be accompanied by an adult. The Skirball is located at 2701 North Sepulveda Boulevard. Information on ticket prices can be found by going to skirball.org. And that's a look at some upcoming things to do. If you're looking to keep your kids busy this summer, your local pool may be the perfect solution as a free swim program gets underway. Yana Kay reports. For these kids, swimming is one of the best things about summer. And to help keep them in the pool, Kaiser Permanente has kicked off its ninth year of Operation Splash. Where we can have swimming available to kids, where they can come and exercise, where they can come and have fun with their friends, and it's just a great way to spend summer. Kaiser Permanente, Council Member Mike Bonin, and Department of Recreation and Parks officials announced the free program at Stoner Park Pool in West L.A. That many don't realize that this department was really founded on two things. One was playgrounds and the other was swimming. And um, they've got a great tradition of aquatics here in our, in our department. As part of Operation Splash, Kaiser Permanente gave the Department of Recreation and Parks a $265,000 grant to provide free swim lessons for children and adults at Los Angeles City Pools. 
Experts say activities like swimming help kids stay entertained while helping fight childhood obesity. That's so important for kids to have fun while they're being physically active. Kaiser Permanente officials say they are committed to promoting healthy living for all L.A. residents, and Operation Splash is the perfect way to meet that goal. I'm Yana Kay for L.A. This Week. The pools will be opened through Labor Day weekend, and that's going to do it for this edition. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ellen Chang. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll leave you now with more sights and sounds from the King's Victory Parade downtown. See you back here next week for more of L.A. This Week. disaster strikes without warning? What if life as you know it has completely turned on its head? What if everything familiar becomes anything but? Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed today. Hi. Hi, I'm Craig Irwin in Los Angeles. Hi, I'm Trenton Irwin, and you're watching LA City View, Channel 35, Power City, Hunter.
Good morning. Today is Wednesday, June 25th. I want to welcome each and every one of you to your Los Angeles City Council meeting. This meeting, I mean, this council meets every Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday at 10 a.m. and the uh, public is welcome. Mr. Clerk, I believe that we have a quorum. Could you please call the roll? Blumenfield, Bonabusca, Eno, Cedillo, Englander, Fuentes, Huizar, Koretsko, Corain, Labanche, Martinez, O'Farrell, Parks, Price, Weston, 13 members present. And a quorum, Mr. President? First order of business. Approval of the minutes. Cedillo moves, Martinez seconds. Next. Mr. President, that brings us to commendatory resolutions for approval. Wezar moves, Buscaino seconds. That brings us where? Mr. President, there are requests to continue items 1A through 1F to August 27, to receive and file item 2 in as much as the taxpayer has entered into an installment agreement with the Office of Finance, and to receive and file item 35 in as much as the commissioner has withdrawn from consideration. Okay, so uh, without objection, that'll be the order. Very good, sir. Items 1 through 11 are items noticed for public hearing. Do we have cards? Sir, we have cards on 1 and 5. Okay, uh, let's prepare to take up the other or the remaining items. Um, Madam Clerk, please open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Next section. Items 12 through 31 are items for which public hearings have been held. Uh, please note that a corrected committee report for item 28, identifying community impact reports submitted by the Van Nuys Neighborhood Council, has been circulated. Further, items 14 and, thir and 30 are communications from the chair and member of the Budget and Finance Committee. Lastly, item 26 from the Economic Development Committee is forthcoming and should be held on the desk. Okay, then, without objection, we'll do that. Why don't we uh, prepare to vote on the remaining item specials? Ms. Martinez. Yes, I'd like to call item 28 special, please. No problem. Item 28, called special by Ms. Martinez. Mr. will hold 21 as well. Members, any other specials? So let's prepare to let's prepare to vote. Let us open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. Public comment. Tabulate oh, the 13 vote. Thirteen eyes. Thank you. And that brings us where. Ms. Items 32 through 46 are items for which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. Okay, so without objection, those items are now before us. And, Mr. President, if I may, item 42, we're expecting a substitute motion. Uh, so if you could hold that on the desk, that would be uh, appropriate. No problem. We'll hold that. Uh, members? Cards? Yes, sir. Uh, we have cards on items 32, 42, 43, and 45. Okay, let's prepare to, let's hold those items and prepare to vote on the remaining items. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Next. Mr. President, that brings us to items 47 and 48. They're items scheduled for closed session. Would you like to hold them on the desk? I will defer to the Chair of Budget and Finance, Mr. Kokorian. Thank you very much, Mr. President. These are both uh, matters in which the city attorney has recommended settlement. Uh, budget and finance concurs with the recommendations, and those uh, matters can be resolved in open session unless members have uh, questions or concerns that need to be dis discussed in closed session. Okay, members, I, uh, Mr. Kokorian, I don't see any questions uh, where it relates to those items, so if I could get the clerk to, uh, I guess, officially read them, and then we can vote. Very good, sir. Uh, for item 48, in the case entitled Landscape Development Incorporated versus City of Los Angeles, there is a recommendation to expend $110,000 in settlement. And for item 48, in the case entitled Joseph Vela versus City of Los Angeles, there's a recommendation to expend $265,176.14 in settlement. Okay, then, uh, Madam Clerk, uh, let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay, Mr. Clerk, that brings us where? 
Mr. President, that brings council back to presentations or items called special. Okay, so until we are ready to move into our presentation for today, let's take up a couple of cards. Let's start with item one and Mr. John Walsh. Mr. Walsh. Take your time, Mr. Walsh. I always run HollywoodHighlands.org, not for office. All our immigrants here, my great-great-great-grandfather came here as an immigrant, fought in the Revolutionary War On the subject, for you, John. in the Revolutionary War for you, On the an subject. Irishman, Murphy. HollywoodHighlands.org, this is number one, and this concerns uh, public hearings. Building and safety. Again, I, I keep, people are now coming to my website and say, thank you, you told me what to do. And I'll tell people again what to do. If your landlord has, if there are violations in your house, you go to the city, uh, code violations. If the landlord doesn't fix it in 30 days, you don't pay the landlord anymore. You pay the city until the city, until the la landlord cleans up the, uh, the problems. That's what you do in this city. Congratulations, HollywoodHighlands.org. Okay, let's uh, prepare to vote on that item. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Mr. Walsh, don't go too far. This is item five. I have a card from you as well. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org, or Jay Walsh Confidential, tweeting at Hollywood Dems. This concerns a, uh, a lighting district. L.A., parts of L.A. have great lighting, mainly where people with my skin, skin color are, is. When uh, parts of the city where blacks and Hispanics live have terrible lighting. I, I, I challenge one black or Hispanic person here to get up and say, we have great lighting in our neighborhood, almost as good as the Jewish neighborhoods. I'm sorry. And my grandmother was a Jew. I'm sorry, there's racism here. The lights are terrible. That, what, you wanna know why there's so much crime in South LA? Because there's no lighting. Because the criminals know if they go to West LA, they'll get caught. They know if they come to, L, to Hollywood, or to uh, down into the black neighborhoods and the Hispanic neighborhoods in East LA, it's open season. Chief Beck, all you can kill in LA, all you can kill as long as they're not white people. HollywoodHighlands.org. Let's prepare to vote on this item. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. All right, let's go to item 21. Let's uh, prepare to vote. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Next, we'll move forward to item 32. Mr. Walsh, it's you again on item 32. Mr. Bonnie. I'd just like to ask if we could send item number 40 forthwith. Without objection. Thank you. John Walsh blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org. This is my third time up, a minute each. Uh, item uh, 32 is uh, very important. This concerns uh, Rosa Russell to the Human Relations Commission. Now, we're 100% in favor of her being put in. Uh, we weren't in favor of the mayor putting his boyfriend, Glenn Dake, into a position, 
uh, because he's a bisexual Let's boyfriend. Let's just stay on okay, Ms. Russell. We'll say, notice he didn't say I'm lying. Okay, HollywoodHighlands.org as far as Ms. Rosa Russell. But remember what happens. When you had a black mayor, you just got appointed. When you have our new mayor, who's half Jewish and half Mexican, you have to write a complete letter of resignation, undated, and hand it in to the black, to the Hispanic Jewish mayor, and he can get rid of you at any time by signing it off, signing it off and putting a date on it. And I just want to know, as I said, I'm in favor of this woman because she hasn't had any kitty porn on her record that some others have. Okay, Miss Russell, why don't you just come forward for a second? And I'm only doing this because I know you have a seat. I'd like to, for those of you on the council that don't know Miss Russell, I would like to afford her an opportunity to shh. It's very important. I'd like to afford her the opportunity to introduce herself to you. I do want you to know that I have known her since 1986. She and I worked together for several years. She is a pillar in the community. She is very active and um, has volunteered. I don't even want to give you the list of things that she has volunteered for. She has a, a, a posse here today celebrating her appointment. And so with that said, that, with that said, Ms. Russell, just a brief uh, statement from you, and I think we can wrap this up. Uh, uh, thank you, um, President um, Wesson, and to the uh, to whole uh, council members. Um, I am honored and proud to be appointed to Human Relations. Um, I am a community person. I've been involved with the community. I like to make things happen, see that working with the city and other departments, which I've had in the many years from working with uh, council people. So, and I've worked with two council persons, so I know exactly how the city runs and what we need to do as human relations commissioner. So I want to thank you so very much. Okay, there are no questions on the queue, so why don't members, let's prepare to vote. Madam Clerk, if you would open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 eyes. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. It's unanimous. Let's go to item 42. Um, Mr. Herman, I think that was called special by you. Item 42, called special by Mr. Herman. And Rosa, if you could, if you could come this way for a minute. Ms. Russell. Mr. Herman. Mr. Herman, it's item 42. To be quick, this is to give to you, I mean all of you, the idea that Mr. LeBonge and Mr. Busciano, for one minute I'm going to speak, says, relative funding for consult services to prepare a neighborhood traffic management plan for the Miracle Mile neighborhood. Good job, gentlemen. Have a nice after morning, noon, blah, blah, blah. That was enlightening. Okay, let's prepare to uh, vote. Let's open the roll. M Mr. President, pardon me. We do have a substitute motion uh, in for 42. Okay, so let's uh, prepare to vote on the... Uh, so it's a two-voter. Okay, so let's make the first vote. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate. 
The vote? 13 ayes. Now we will vote actually on the uh, substance of the matter. Let's open the roll. As amended, close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Next, we'll move to item 45. Mr. Herman again on item 45. Mr. Herman, please. Item running, 45. Running my time, or are you going to start my time, sir? You're running my time? Item 45. Okay, we're talking about sidewalks. To this day, you're in violation of the ADA compliance under Title I and Title II, Section 504. For we, the public, demand safe sidewalks. And as you run my time, I'm going to hold it to one minute because, again, I believe everyone has access and a right to use a public sidewalk without barriers and interference by council that does not provide safe Mr. sidewalks. City Thank Attorney, you. let's prepare to vote on this item. Let us open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Now I'd like to uh, defer to Mr. Gilbert Cedillo, the councilman. Are you ready to move forward yes. with uh, the presentation of the day? All right, the floor is yours. Can we get all the honorees up here? Please, all the uh, honorees come to the center aisle. Right behind Mr. Uh, Cedillo. We want to welcome you all to your city hall. Mr. Cedillo. Mr. President, it is an incredible honor and privilege to be here today as we inaugurate the first Immigration Month for the City of Los Angeles. As you know, Los Angeles is a city of immigrants, founded by immigrants, a city that is uh, very fortunate to have amongst itself over 100 languages spoken in this great city. Uh, it is the largest uh, city of immigrants from so many countries, uh, the largest uh, Mexican population outside of Mexico City, the largest Salvadorian population outside of El Salvador, the largest Guatemalan population out of Guatemala, uh, I believe the largest Filipino population out of, outside of Manila. On and on and on, this is a city like this nation where people come with their hopes and their aspirations for a better life. They come not just as immigrants, but as entrepreneurs. They come to make an economic contribution, uh, a moral and cultural contribution. Uh, they come to be completely integrated into the social Shh, fabric. Hold on. Hold, hold. Please, let's be quiet and pay our, show our respects. Mr. Cedillo, back to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, they come to fully integrate themselves into the social life of this great city. And so it's an honor that we're here today to honor a representative group of immigrants uh, in the city uh, who have played a vital role selected by their council members uh, as the uh, immigrant of the month for their districts. And I want to take a, a moment just to uh, introduce them. Uh, we had a ceremony earlier outside. All of them received their, um, their presentation, their plaques, their their Acknowledgements. Let me show that. All of them outside receive their acknowledgements like this. Uh, I want to introduce them. Bravo. You want to do this with me?
I, I brought uh, Mr. Kikorian up to because he's so articulate and thoughtful. I thought I'd embellish my uh, brought a little back up. <laughs> <laughs> he's got my back. So, at a time when there's incredible rancor uh, in Washington, a lack of action, uh, the debate and discussion, or whatever goes on for debate and discussion, is so negative. Uh, it's always important for this city to express with its leadership, its voice of leadership. Uh, the important role that immigrants do play in our society here in Los Angeles and California. And so uh, with collaboration and help from the mayor's office, uh, his office of immigrant affairs, uh, with a group that we welcome called welcome.us and forward.us, uh, this was brought to us uh, as an idea uh, just a few weeks ago. And within a few weeks, uh, the collaboration of the staffs of all those entities and the leadership of my staff, we've brought this uh, to Los Angeles. It's the first, uh, but it won't be the last because this city will continue to be uh, a great city of hopes and aspirations for all immigrants of the world. And so it's with a great, uh, great honor that we acknowledge uh, Immigration Month for the city of Los Angeles. I want to introduce my colleague, Paul Krikorian who spoke so eloquently earlier this morning about its importance. Thank you very much, Mr. Cedillo, and thank you for this inaugural event, which I hope will be a, a long and important tradition in this City Council for us to recognize the rich contributions that immigrants have made throughout the history of this country and from throughout the world. Um, every one of us here uh, has immigrate, has ancestors who have immigrated to this country. Even Mr. O'Farrell, who also traces Native American roots, uh, also has his uh, immigrant roots as well. Um, so each of us has that element in common. Uh, my own family immigrated to this country about 100 years ago. My grandparents came to this country and struggled in the same way that immigrants are struggling uh, right now today uh, to make uh, a go of it. So um, if, if I may, uh, Mr. Cedillo, I, I would like to uh, acknowledge the presence of the honoree for the second council district, uh, Archbishop Hovnan Derderian, uh, the Archbishop of the Western Diocese of the Armenian, uh, the Armenian uh, Church of North America, which is the largest diocese uh, of Armenian congregants anywhere in the world outside of Armenia. As Mr. Sadio mentioned, this is uh, the home of the largest part of the Armenian diaspora in the world. And His Eminence, Archbishop Derderian, has been not only a, an exemplary spiritual leader for that community, uh, but a representative of the con rich contributions that immigrants have made uh, to this country. Uh, he came himself as an immigrant and has transformed the Western Diocese of uh, the Armenian Church and has brought his, his leadership not only in a spiritual capacity, uh, but as an advocate for all those who've immigrated here and struggled, uh, who've come from places like Iran and Iraq and Lebanon and, of course, Armenia and other places throughout the world to make their home here in Southern California and throughout the Western United States. Uh, so I couldn't think of a better honoree who not only is himself uh, an, an extraordinarily exemplary uh, immigrant to the, these shores, uh, but also somebody who represents uh, the, the, a very large immigrant community here and advocates for them. And it was for those reasons that just earlier this year, His Eminence was awarded with the Ellis Island National Medal of Honor uh, for his, uh, his, the example that he has set as an immigrant who's arrived here in Southern California. Your Eminence, it's a great honor to have you with us today. Let me uh, name the honorees that were uh, given to us by various offices. Uh, they are as follows. Salvador Lara, uh, Isabel Salas, Miguel Luna, Jerónimo Garcia, Negas Niki Legese, Gloria Ayala, Carlos Zaragoza, as we've just heard, the Archbishop, and then finally, perhaps one of the most important uh, advocates for immigrants for over 60 years, he dedicated his life. Uh, he created a organization in my district on Pico and Catalina. Uh, he was a professor, he was a union organizer, he was a teacher, he was a 
advocate, uh, unparalleled in the history of this uh, state and nation. Uh, Bert Corona uh, is our honoree. I want to thank and all the honorees for being here with us today. Uh, this is the inaugural, uh, but as I said, not the last. Let me introduce uh, the group that brought this idea to us. This is part of a national effort and a national campaign. Uh, Tolu Olubumi is the executive director of Welcome.us or Welcome.us, and she's been involved in this uh, effort at a national level. Uh, she comes by way of Maryland. Uh, it's a great pleasure to introduce Tolu Olubumi. Thank you, sir. Good morning. Um, I am honored, humbled uh, to be here today uh, to represent Welcome.us and to be here with uh, the councilman. Uh, we are thrilled by this opportunity. Welcome.us is dedicated to celebrating a United States that is fueled by immigrants from around the world. Uh, our role really is to elevate the inspirational stories of, of those immigrants, and there isn't a better example of that than here in the great city of LA. Uh, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce Michael Burkheim, who is a founder of Welcome, uh, Charlie, and a leader in, with, in, in the uh, LA community and nationwide. He has been an inspirational part of Welcome.us. He has been committed to this campaign and organization from its inception, and I am thrilled to have him join us today. Michael? Let me, um, because I forgot, uh, let me queue up. We have a uh, video that's queued up for this, and we can play that before we hear from Michael. Wind struck rock and stuck. Together we came across the ocean and towards the unknown. By horse and wheel, westward we came, chasing the sunset. We came by steam, across rivers, over mountains and valleys, towards the promise of a new beginning. We conquered the skies built planes, buses, and cars. When we had nothing else, we came on foot, ran, and walked, and crawled. We made history in the wake of those who came before us, before the waves of all of those yet to come. We carried luggage, letters, and loved ones. Some of us carry nothing but our own potential. We came for love, for liberty, for life. Our reasons for coming were as unique and as numerous as the forces that brought us here. But once we arrived, all of us did the exact same thing. We helped build this country, and we were welcome. Please welcome the executive director of, and founder of Welcome.us, Michael Broking. Thank you, and uh, just, just watching that video um, makes me want to uh, just appreciate and first start by recognizing uh, so many people who were involved in making this campaign a reality. Um, I'm, you know, we're accepting this proclamation. Obviously, thank you to Councilman Cedillo and, and the mayor's office for for, putting, for, for organizing this event today. Um, on behalf of uh, several co-founders, the executive director of Welcome.us, Tolu Olubumi, uh, Dan Adler, Joe Green, uh, Jen Martin, uh, Catherine Lyons, the entire Welcome.us family and Forward.us family, and literally hundreds of volunteers who've come out of the woodworks um, to celebrate the first ever Immigrant Heritage Month. It's, it's truly an honor to be here. And to see this uh, grow from, um, you know, what what makes this particularly special in front of this, um, you know, this august uh, august body is that, and I don't know if you know this, um, Immigrant Heritage Month. Er, Immigrant Heritage Month was actually born in Los Angeles. Uh, it, it grew out of a series of dinners organized by a very close friend of mine, Joe Green, who's the um, founder and president of Forward.us. He's been working for several years on immigration policy issues. 
uh, gathered a group of friends of us together and said, how do I get the grassroots more activated around this issue? How do I get um, you know, every, everyone just so, sort of thinking about immigration and what an important issue it is? And uh, we thought that actually the opening was to do something um, pretty different and, and actually go in a different direction than, um, than politics. Uh, we said that the, 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 the stuff that we're talking about in, in the political rhetoric around this issue um, is, is obviously important, but uh, there's sort of a, 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 an underlying foundation. Um, when, you have, when you have political issues, you, you have a lot of divisive rhetoric, and some people can recoil from that, and specific policies that people may or may not agree with, but when you think about this country and what makes it great, um, there's very little that you can disagree about the fact that it's a country that's built on immigrants, a tradition of immigration, and a history of immigration. Um, and so we came up with the idea of organizing Immigrant Heritage Month to be a platform for everyone to be able to share their story. Um, and everyone, you know, pretty much every single person in the U.S. has a story that they can share, which connects them in a very personal way to the, the, the plight and the, the, the situation that immigrants find, find themselves in today. And so that's the fundamental idea behind Immigrant Heritage Month to create a platform and an opportunity for people to connect with their own immigrant heritage, to celebrate their own immigrant heritage. Um, and we feel very, very lucky that, we've, um, that we've, been, we've been recognized now in over 30 states. And um, as Councilman Cidio said, we hope that's only the beginning. Um, we, we hope that the, the issue um, on the, political, on the political, fr political front makes a lot of progress and hopefully um, you know, we get over that hill. But then we hope that this, this platform actually continues to grow um, and be a way for us all to come together to celebrate something um, that really is America's competitive advantage um, in the world. It's the, it's the one thing that makes us distinct. Uh, you, can, you, know, in, you can sort of go to other countries, you can make other countries your home, but sort of distinctly in the world, you can come to America and become an American. Um, and that's very, very special. And I, you know, I, I would argue that's the single sort of most distinguishing thing about this country. Um, and so, born in Los Angeles, Immigrant Heritage Month, we're very proud to be here. Thank you for recognizing us, and that's all. Thank you very much. Mr. Cedillo, I do have a few members that would like to say a few words. So just depending on when you'd like for yes. them to be uh, inserted. We've got uh, a board member from Welcome uh, US, then we'd love to hear from the members. City Attorney's also here, and then we'll wrap up uh, with uh, the Mayor's office. So let, let us just bring the board member up from... Uh, Please go Welcome. right ahead. Uh, and that is our, our local Angelica Salas, who is the Executive Director of CHIRLA, and our partner and champion in so many campaigns on behalf of immigrants. Um, good morning, everybody, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you to Los Angeles, because I think that we've always set the, the tone, we've always set the pace um, in terms of what it means to be a city that integrates its immigrants, that really recognizes its, their contributions in every aspect uh, of life, economic, social, culturally. Um, it has been in this uh, council chambers um, that we have said in the past proclamations and um, recognitions, as well as good policy um, that supports immigrants. Uh, and I know that it is um, what we've done, uh, there is much more to do, because we need to be an example uh, to the rest of the country uh, about what it means to be a united city, what it means to be a united community. And um, today is just one more example of the great work um, that our leaders, our leaders, starting with our mayor, but certainly with every one of our council members, many of you who are also immigrants yourselves. So it's, uh, it's great with great pride um, that as an honorary board member of, the, of Welcome U.S., um, we uh, accept this proclamation. Thank you. Let me start off with Mr. Price. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. President, to uh, Gil and, and all of us assembled here today. This is an exciting day uh, to celebrate. And I just want to um, recognize the nominee from the 9th District, Gloria Ayala, whose story, I think, is similar to many uh, that, uh, that, we've, that we will hear and that we know of. Gloria came to this country more than 20 years ago. Gloria, why don't you step up to the mic with uh, Gil. Came to this country more than 20 years ago, escaping political turmoil and financial hardship in her native Honduras. 
a university graduate back home, Gloria was the first and her family to make the trek uh, to the United States, really to make a life better uh, for her children. Uh, she was a uh, mother of two, uh, two boys, and it was a difficult choice she had to make leaving them back home. Uh, but proud to say that today, both of her sons are college graduates. One's a, a computer science professional, the other an industrial engineer. Uh, but Gloria worked small jobs and even pursued an education to become a medical assistant uh, in the Ninth District for a while. Soon she was driven to start her own business. And while working at the medical clinic, she pulled together the savings to start an a alteration shop uh, that uh, since became very successful with her two brothers. And then in 2003, uh, she started her own shop, Gloria's Alterations, which operates in the uh, uh, Mercado La Paloma that we all know of in the night. Gloria handles the uh, tailoring needs of so many of our community, including me. Uh, and she certainly greets every customer with a smile. Uh, I think epitomizes the spirit uh, and the, the promise uh, that uh, immigrants have when they come here and as they become members of our community, the, the contribution that, uh, that makes a real rich uh, blessing to our community. So to Gloria and the others, we just say thank you, thank you, thank you, congratulations, and keep up the good work. Thank you, Mr. Price. And members, I want to remind you that there was a ceremony earlier. Uh, so let's uh, be brief as we move forward. Uh, so with that said, I'll turn it over to Mr. Bonin, and we'll see what happens. It all depends on you, Michael. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. So Hieronimo, he's telling me not to talk a lot about you. Uh, so uh, I, I, I won't. I'll say just a brief word. Let me say thank you for bringing this celebration here today. Uh, when I was a kid, I grew up listening to the stories of my great-grandparents who came here through Ellis Island uh, from Italy and from Ireland. Uh, my great-grandfather, who worked construction and helped build the dam and, and gave birth to the American dream for his family. Uh, I'm struck by how this is a city where we have uh, immigrants like Elon Musk, who comes uh, and brings a fortune here and tries to reinvent Los Angeles and Los Angeles and tries to bring us into space. And we have immigrants here um, who work very hard every single day uh, in our restaurants and in our hotels, um, in our homes. Uh, trying to make a better life for their families. Um, I want to thank Hieronimo for all the work he does giving voice to the Oaxacan community in my district. But I want to thank uh, Forward.us and Welcome.us for what they are doing and how they are doing it. Uh, because to me, comprehensive immigration reform is one of the civil rights struggles of our time. And I see an incredible parallel between the way Forward.us and Welcome.us is giving voice to the immigrant community and the way the LGBT community personalized our stories in our civil rights struggle. If we had argued logic, if we had argued fact, if we had argued law, we probably wouldn't have marriage equality in the United States right now. It is when we told our stories and we opened our hearts and revealed ourselves to our families and shared our love that American society's attitudes began to change. And I see this campaign doing the same thing because the heart doesn't ask for documents from anybody. Uh, I, I've never asked a friend to show me his or her documents. And as human faces get added to this issue, human voices get added to this issue, we're going to get closer to comprehensive immigration reform, and I'm looking forward to that day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bond and Mr. O'Farrell. Thank you, Mr. President. I will be as brief as I possibly can, even though it's going to be difficult, because my designee is Miguel Luna. And Miguel, if you wouldn't mind stepping forward, I want everyone to see you and to know who you are. Our founding fathers knew that this was a nation of immigrants. And I'm hoping that this generation of leaders in our United States Capitol will understand that at a more deep level as well. As Mr. Kikorian mentioned, on my mother's side of the family, we, my ancestors dealt with forced relocation to northeast Oklahoma. On my father's side of the family, they dealt with starvation in Ireland and came over three generations ago. So I am the recipient of, of immigration from uh, three generations ago. Um, my designee today, Miguel, I met 10 years ago. We've been friends for 10 years. No one represents the immigrant um, 
sort of struggle. No one articulates a, a, a way forward for illuminating the, the, the social justice piece of immigration rights, in my view, than my dear friend Miguel Luna. And I'm just very proud that you're the honoree today. And founder of Urban Semillas, and let me tell you what their mission is. Our overarching goal is to educate underserved and monolingual uh, Spanish-speaking communities about watershed and social justice issues and provide these with community building skills, thus empowering them to participate in local and citywide planning, as well as playing an active role in city, state, and national policies. Miguel does so much, I can't even describe all that he does, but he is one of the unsung heroes in this movement. And I'm going to mention just a few of the things that he's involved with. Um, Anawak Soccer from 10 years ago, the Community Garden Council, uh, the Neela Collaborative, which uh, is wrapping up their incredible work. Uh, he is the ultimate environmentalist. He's a resident of the great CD13, the 13th district, which is, you know, the melting pot of Los Angeles. And Los Angeles is the melting pot of the United States. Um, uh, outreach, collaboration, LA River. Miguel will teach you how to kayak in the Los Angeles River. That's how on the ground he is. Um, and he is married to Karen, has a wonderful family, and I'm just proud and honored to uh, stand here with you today, Miguel. And, and thank you, and, and thank you, Mr. Cedillo, and, and all of the organizers of this incredible uh, presentation. Thank you so much. Mr. Wizar. Are you coming? Thank you, Mr. President. And um, Mr. Cedillo, when you asked us to choose one uh, immigrant from our council district, it was actually very, very difficult particularly in my district where it is uh, highly foreign-born in a city that's over 40 percent foreign-born. And we have a lot to be thankful for our immigrants who come to this country and contribute. But as you look at the contributions that they've not only made to this great country but to the city, right now when you look at downtown LA and that portion of my district and all the economic development activity that's happening, it's mostly immigrants who are reinvesting in a downtown Los Angeles that many have forgotten and neglected for decades. And when you look at all the new buildings going up, it is our immigrants who are participating in making Los Angeles uh, once again uh, bloom as a Los Angeles we know it all can be. Uh, I myself am an immigrant, came when I was three years old, and like many immigrants who come to this country, we love our home country, uh, but for reasons of work, opportunity, education, we come to this great country. And that's what's great about America, that no matter where you come from in the world, America does provide you those opportunities. And we have one such person here today that we're honoring with Isabel Salas, a wonderful woman who gives of herself unselfishly to the community, who works with LA Voice uh, on a number of immigrant issues and neighborhood issues. Uh, they have made people realize that all politics are local. You begin at the grassroots level, even if you're advocating for federal issues such as immigration reform, and in California at the state level to argue for state licenses for the undocumented. Uh, Isabel, Isabel Salas has been recognized as someone who's shown tremendous growth in her advocacy, and someone who perhaps didn't see herself uh, as someone who could make change, but she's making change for Boa Heights, for Los Angeles, and for the immigrant community. Isabel, Estamos muy orgullosos de usted. Sabemos que usted da de su corazón para la comunidad. Usted da de su tiempo y saca tiempo de su familia para hacer la comunidad más mejor. Y por eso hoy le damos este reconocimiento. Felicidades. Mr. Buscaino. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Mr. Cedillo, uh, for bringing forth this special presentation. I, I too, um, want to rise and, and acknowledge the many contributions immigrants have made in my district, specifically uh, the Italians or Croatians agreed to immigrate to the harbor area for the fishing industry. My family in the mid-60s came uh, from Italy um, for a better life, uh, for, to make contributions to the fishing industry, whether it's through commercial fishing or also through the canneries. And I'd be remiss if I wouldn't recognize my honoree, Salvador Lara a dear friend who I had an opportunity to work with as a senior lead officer through the Spanish CPAB uh, at Harbor Area. Uh, Salvador has been a champion uh, for improving uh, his efforts in improving the quality of life in our Wilmington community. Uh, he started the Clean Wilmington program, working with our community-based organization, seeking dollars for our, our, our corporate friends uh, in Wilmington uh, to um, clean the streets and alleys and work hand-in-hand -hand with Gabriela Medina, my 
my field deputy in Wilmington, and also through uh, sanitation department, san sanitation department, uh, and working with Enrique's office and his, his entire department. Uh, so, Salvador, we say thank you. You have a heart of gold. Thank you for your contributions uh, to the city, specifically to our beloved Wilmington community, and congratulations. Ms. Martinez. Thank you, Mr. President. I have to acknowledge someone that's very special to me. And if uh, you're familiar with the San Fernando Valley, a lot of times, um, you know, this wonderful woman doesn't often get recognized, but I have to say a couple of words about my good friend Chole a la Torre, who never gets acknowledged for the, all the wonderful activism in the San Fernando Valley. She's an amazing trailblazer. Whether she'd be marching with Bert Corona or Cesar Chavez or against Proposition 187 or Proposition 209, or making sure that we're organized to get new, new citizens uh, registered to vote to make sure that their voices are heard in the political process, that's her. That's Chole La Torre. La quiero mucho. Uh, que Dios la bendiga y muchas felicidades. And thank you, thank you so much for being such a good friend to me. Mr. Uh, City Attorney, did you want to say a few words? Sure. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Cedillo, for bringing this celebration forward. I think it's so poignant to each of us because, as has been said, each of us has such a personal story about the significance of immigration to our families as well as to our city and our country. You know, we all, I think, have many of us at least, have relatives, Ellis Island, names changed, birthdays changed, come to this country, my mom, Boyle Heights, 1930s, speaking Spanish and Russian and Yiddish, English was like a fourth language, um, in a context where everyone's backgrounds enrich the backgrounds of others. And I have to re I say, as I was standing here, I was thinking about a story that's similar to stories each of us has heard from a child or a grandchild of immigrants. Uh, a leader in this city said to me, my parents immigrated to this country and when I was in school, one day, my mom said to me, we didn't sacrifice this much for you not to do your very best in school. And it's that instinct, that passion, that makes immigration so important. Because that drive to overcome what one has had to sacrifice, left everything to change the world, that drive is what fuels everything in our society, that energy that initiative is what makes America so distinct. And from the standpoint of the city attorney's office, I do want to say immigrants in our community, especially recent immigrants throughout the city, can, because they're new immigrants, be victimized. They can be victimized by criminals. They can be victimized by not getting paid. They can be victimized by people who are trying to help with their or who purport to be helping with their immigration status, but are instead just trying to take their money. And our office is going to continue to stand with immigrants so we assure that their rights are vindicated in what can and should be a great city. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Cedillo. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Cedillo, I, too, want to thank you and all of the individuals that are being uh, honored, honored today. And I, did, I have to recognize Nikki Lagasse from my district, who is just a phenomenal human being and a leader. She's right up to your left. And we have her son with us today and her mother all the way from Ethiopia. So uh, uh, Nikki was Ethiopia to Buffalo to L.A., and thank you for all you do. And to the rest of you, this country is, this great country is a better country because of your contribution. Mr. Cedillo? Yes, uh, let me introduce the executive director of our Office of Immigrant Affairs, uh, Linda Lopez. Please come forward. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to first of all thank Council Member Cedillo for his leadership in introducing June Heritage Month today in City Council Chambers. Uh, he has been, as many of you know, a true trailblazer, uh, an advocate for immigrants, really an icon for our immigrant community. I want to also thank Welcome.us for their vision in establishing June Immigrant Heritage Month here in the City of Angels. 
Today, we celebrate all of the contributions that immigrants make to this great city who come here for a better life and opportunity. We celebrate today the diversity that makes this city the vibrant place that it is. On behalf of Mayor Eric Garcetti, I want to take this opportunity to salute all of the honorees that are behind me today for all of their contributions that they make for this city. Today we celebrate you and the immigrant experience here in LA where more than 40% of our population is foreign born and come from all corners of the world. All of us have a shared immigrant experience when we think about our ancestors who come to the city for a better life. Our immigrant communities are the beating heart of our city, and we are very proud to be part of this effort with the mayor's office. I am honored today to represent Mayor Eric Garcetti as his new director of immigrant affairs, an office that was reestablished to help support our immigrants into the fabric of the city, both socially, economically, politically, and to really help them in advance in the city and make, be, have them be successful in our city. We've also, uh, with the Office of Immigrant Affairs, have been following a lot of the policy issues, both at the local, state, and federal level, and we will continue to advocate on behalf of our immigrants here in the city of LA. I think we can all agree with an esprit de corps that when we identify as Angelinos, that we bring to the table the spirit of openness that is unmatched and unwavering to support and welcome our immigrants. Today, we celebrate our immigrants, both in the past, present, and future, and we will continue to celebrate this diversity that makes our city, the City of Angels, rich and inclusive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. President, let me finish by also thanking the mayor. He has been uh, an incredible voice on behalf of immigrants and a real leader. It's amazing that on one day he can ask the president to give us a billion dollars for our river, and yet without any pause or hesitation call upon the president to stop the deportations now re beyond two million deportees. Uh, the division and disruption of their family is incredible and it must be stopped. Uh, but it will be stopped, as our colleague uh, Michael Bonin said, when people understand that we are all immigrants and that we are all part of this great nation and this great city. I've never been prouder to be an American or an Angelino than I am today. I thank you. Mr. President, let me give this to the executive director. Go right ahead. Thank you, sir. If you guys could look to the center, we've got a very patient young photographer. So, Mr. Cedillo, if you could let her get one more shot. Get your shot. <laughs> get your shot, miss. You're welcome. All right. Thank you all. Thank you all so much. Okay, Mr. Clerk, we're now going to move to item... 26. It's my understanding uh, whatever amendments or changes the committee report or whatever has been submitted at this time so that we can vote on it. So, members, on item 26, let us open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. And Mr. President, for clarification, that's the Economic Development Committee report that was adopted. Forthwith on that item. Ms. Uh, Martinez, did you want to go to item 28 at this time? Um, yes, um, Mr. President, that'd be fine if we can take speakers first. 
Okay, it's my understanding that uh, in communications with your office, we were going to do a minute each, 10 minutes, five, four, and five against. Is okay, so let's uh, start off. Okay, so uh, Jeffrey Lynn, Rabina is a, I cannot make out the last name, I apologize. Uh, Cheryl Grant, Zarek Dietz, please come forward. And it doesn't have to be in any order, so just identify yourself. Yes, good morning, Jeffrey Lynn. Uh, on behalf of myself and my neighbors, I'd like to object to the inadequate notice of this public hearing before the City Council. The notice of this City Council hearing on the project is inadequate. By the law, the City should have provided at least 10 days' notice following the, the date of the Public Works and Gang Reduction Committee, June 18, 2014, action approving the resolution and recommending Council approval of the project. Instead, we got only seven days' notice. Furthermore, the notice erroneously states that there was no community impact statement. To the extent that is false, that is misleading. Therefore, the council should withdraw this item today and reschedule it for a different day when the correct procedure by law is followed. Finally, I would like to confirm the information given to me by the city clerk yesterday and again today that all the documents provided to us by the city under the Public Records Act, uh, amounting to some 10,000 documents, have been made part of the council file and are now and will remain a part of the council file. Thank you. Thank you, sir. If I could have the next speaker, please come forward and identify yourself. Rabina Sewell. I'm a 25-year resident. I would like the council to know that we honor and respect our first responders. This is not about our honorable firemen. This is about the proposed location of this site. There are health concerns for residents and for the firemen. And the project lacked transparency, notification, and public records were extremely difficult to obtain. The mitigated negative declaration failed to include the synergistic effects, the cumulative impacts, the multiple sources of toxic emissions on the proposed site, as well as in the community. We respectfully request that you find an alternate location. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. If I could have the next... Uh Speaker, please, just please identify yourself and welcome. Hello, my name is Cheryl Grant, and I am against the fire station relocation to Vesper and Oxnard. There's many negative reasons, thank you, many negative reasons why I oppose it, but the number one reason that I would like people to know is that they want to relocate the fire station to the southernmost border of the district that it serves. And it's to, to uh, answer calls north, it's several miles it needs to cross the metro. There's many other locations that would be a better choice, much closer to the district that it serves. We're already very close to other fire stations, and it would basically render the homes 50 feet away from it, from the proposed site, untenable. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker, please. Yeah, Zarek Dietz, and uh, thank you for our firefighters. Um, but I do have to say that location is uh, one that we do not support. In 2009, I have an article from the LA Times of uh, former council member Cardenas stating that uh, Van Nuys Boulevard was actually the best location for this, uh, because, and there was a lot of open spaces on Van Nuys Boulevard to put this. And I've got this article if you guys want to see it. Um, there was so ne there's no need for having this location. We feel that the other locations were not exhausted. There are a lot of alternate locations that this could all be put in um, around the area. I have maps of different areas that are vacant or usable. There's a uh, Bureau of street, street Services just down the street closer to Sepulveda that can actually be swapped and, and get a nice big lot there. And it would, it would cause, it would be more of a commercial area. Um, and, uh, you know, we understand that also, you know, I want to say that you mentioned earlier that this is a fair country. Um, we do ask for you to postpone this vote and to exhaust all Thank possibilities. Uh, Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Let's now move to, uh, I believe I'm with the supporters. Is there a Jeanette 
hop. I, I, just, just let me do the best I can, Candido. Don't disrupt the meeting. Okay, ma'am, please come forward. Followed by a Maria Scherzer, uh, Monica, after you. So go ahead, identify yourself. Good morning, Mr. President and council members in particular, Neri Martinez, my board member. My name is Jeanette. I am a resident of Van Nuys. I am an officer of the Van Nuys Neighborhood Council, and I'm a budget advocate. And I'm here to speak on behalf of myself, a number of residents in Van Nuys with whom I have spoken, and Kathleen Patton, who is also a board member, who has asked me expressly to uh, give you her take on this issue as her husband is having surgery this morning. Um, I'm here to tell you that we are wholeheartedly in favor. We, and I must explain that because I've been chastised in the past for not having done that. We, meaning Kathleen Patton, myself, and the residents with whom I have spoken, are in favor of the fire station 39 being relocated to Oxnard and Vesper. And we realize that to be a good idea because of the fact that, first and foremost, it has multiple entrances and exits, which will allow it to go in and out different ways and not be ha being forced to back into that facility and holding up traffic. And secondly, that it also, to my understanding, will be having the Jeopardy program located on that site. And as you all are aware, that is a program to help at-risk youth, and we think that's wonderful. So we want you to know we appreciate it. And thank, thank you. Thank so you. Thank you. So if I can get Maria followed by Monica Alexinko. Okay, yes, welcome and go right ahead. Maria Schertzer. Sure. For the record, it should be noted, many of the Sherman Oaks residents who opposed the relocation of Fire Station 39 were until July 2009 residents of and part of Van Nuys. They petitioned the city for a name change to Sherman Oaks because as their spokesperson, Lorette Healy, stated so eloquently, quote, we share common complexion and values with Sherman Oaks. Now, moving forward, we all know the fire department serves the entire city of Los Angeles. Stations are located where there, there's the greatest need. And we also know that firemen, when rushing to an emergency, do not stop at some imaginary neighborhood boundary and say, oh my, we mustn't go there. That's Sherman Oaks, and we are Van Nuys firemen. So, um, new fire station 39 will be an asset and benefit to Van Nuys, as well as Sherman Oaks and the Grady Valley community. Thank you. Thank you. If I could have the next speaker, followed by Marion, Marion Fogler. Marion, you're after. Yes, go right ahead. Monica Alexenko. We believe the majority of people in CD6 and CD4 are in favor of the Oxnard Fire Station location. We have heard all sorts of distorted factoids about this project, that the station would be 25 feet from a bedroom window. How could that even be possible? Oxnard Boulevard alone is 80 feet wide from curb to curb. The public at large has been well informed on this matter. We ask that no more delays and harassment be allowed. The station was to begin construction in January, and here we are almost seven months behind schedule. The tactics to delay this Van Nuys project from a small group who live in a Sherman Oaks adjacent area and are altogether outside of Van Nuys must cease and desist. Lastly, we request that the tallest and largest possible sound barrier wall be built on the south side of Oxnard Boulevard as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Marion Fogler. I look forward to this beautiful uh, fire station, and the city put a lot of money and effort into it, and a lot of plans, and the fire personnel are for it. I'm for it. And uh, I look forward to uh, being part of this great project because it's going to really embark a new endeavor for Van Nuys. We need to bring back video conferencing along with this fire come station. On, come on, Miriam, stay on site. We need to have the fire station, but I want to say that we want to have our video conferencing. No, no, stay on the subject, please. The point that I'm saying is, the point I'm saying is that Money had been poured into this project, and it has to be done because it was already planned. Nobody, nobody made an objection to it at the time. There was plenty of hearings. 
and everything. So it's a done deal. Thank you. Thank you. And Miriam, when we get to Miriam, when we get to general public comment, you can have at it where it relates to video conferencing. So when we get to that. Okay. Now I have three cards that are kind of no they didn't press uh, uh, check yes or or no. So uh, we only have a few minutes left, so that's Candido, uh, Akala, and Pierman. No, just, well, then if you don't need to speak, okay. Come on, uh, Candido, come on, come on. I, I agree, but let's get it going. So it's not a yes or no here, so you can state where you are. Okay. I'm uh, Donna Perriman. I'm strongly for have, uh, moving the fire station where the uh, city council has decided they want it. Uh, especially Nuri Martinez said that she wants that in that area. And basically what you got to do is the good for the whole, air, uh, all whole city and not just for a one little area. I mean, they spent a lot of money on this already and people have to realize, yes, you have the right, they have the right to free speech. But sometimes you don't win. So that's basically what the people who want to move. Sometimes you just don't win. You have to put up with what uh, life gives you. So I, I, I love the fire department. And, uh, and if I was on that area, I would want the first response to be able to come over to me and be able to get there as quickly as possible. I think those people are lucky in that area. And way to go, city council. Keep it where you have it and stick by your guns. Thank, Thank you. you. Candido, please come forward. Good morning, Mr. President. Candido Maris and Mr. Uh, Jim Piper with We Do Love uh, Van Nuys. Uh, we, we took an oath when we swore to be uh, council members and uh, neighborhood councilmen. And I'm supposed to represent, when I was there for 12 years, it was to represent all, not Northern Van Nuys, not Southern Van Nuys, not Sherman Oaks. If you listen to the people that were always saying it's uh, Sherman Oaks or it's Van Nuys, that's the problem with this city, Mr. President. We're one city. We have to do what's best for everyone. And when I hear some of these ladies talking about how the uh, the fire uh, station would be better off on Oxnard when they both have had to experience issues with the fire department, and yet the fire department will now be further away from them. Ms. Martinez, I love working with you on some of the issues, but I, what kind of an individual will I be? What kind of a person would you be able to trust in me if I don't stand up for the things that I believe in? And I believe the people in Sherman Oaks, part of Van Nuys, originally from Van Nuys, are part of Van Nuys, deserve to be heard, and their concerns are about quality of life. And as long as I can live, okay, I will fight. Okay, Mr. Akala. Mr. Akala. Well, uh, personally, I'm not only concerned about Van Nuys and Van Owen and Van, Van Houston and Van, all these Van, whatever they are, I'd like to be able to sleep in my van. And you know what? We just won the case. No, come on, Mr. Kala. Please stay on the subject. Be fair, sir. The subject is uh, homeless are everywhere. No, it's not. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, uh, Ms. Martinez, I'm going to defer to you. And then I believe I have Mitchell on the queue. So. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, colleagues, the issue we have in front of us today is the relocation of Fire Station 39. Uh, for some of you, you probably know what Fire Station 39 is. It's a fire station right across the street from the Van Nuys City Hall. So when we get to meet there, you guys have um, once or twice have probably seen the big fire trucks trying to maneuver their way around Sylvan in such a narrow street. The new proposed location is on Oxnard. And it currently, it's considered a secondary highway. And the proposed location was proposed five years ago. We've had a number of almost 12 meetings or 12 hearings, including this one, to try to address some of the concerns with the neighbors. I do recognize that there are neighbors across the street from Oxnard whose backyards abut the proposed site. I recognize that. Back in September of last year, Mr. Labonge, uh, uh, asked the uh, Public Works Committee to conduct a sound study for the possible, uh, to, to possibly mitigate some of the uh, sound noise from the fire engines. That came back and we amended the um, negative declaration environments to be able to reflect some of the mitigations that we were going to be doing as a result of that sound study. That's been met. But we have 
We have had a number of 12 public hearings over the past 12 months to address the very issues that some of the neighbors have, um, have uh, had concerns with. So we've done that. So I ask for your support to relocate Fire Station 39 to Oxnard and Vesper. And I want to thank the Bureau of Engineering and the Fire Department for their diligent work. But not only that, this fire station is going to re be relocated as a result of the savings from Proposition F that the voters passed almost a decade ago. So kudos to them for the savings and for relocating a fire station that was built in 1939. It's about time we do that. It's one of the oldest fire stations in the valley, and um, it's going to hopefully be a better location for uh, our response time and a better location to serve the community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Englander. Thank you. Um, I, I felt compelled to, to speak on this. Um, I, you know, I often say that nobody knows better on land use issues than the very people that live there. But when it comes to a fire station, it, it's just shocking to me that anybody would um, not want it in their community. I understand, you know, they have certain impacts, there's noise, sirens are going off, until you have to dial 911 and you need those local heroes to respond to your home, to your loved one. You want them as absolutely close as possible. Um, and, and it just, as a chair of public safety, really surprises me. Ms. Martinez is absolutely doing the right thing on this. And, um, you know, if we can put a fire station in every community, we would do that. Um, and uh, I applaud your leadership on this. I applaud the fire department's role in this as well. Uh, the chair of public works, uh, who had all the numerous hearings on this, uh, this is definitely the right thing to do and uh, support your decision on this. Thank you. No, no, no. Well said, uh, Mr. Englander. Okay, let's, uh, and, and Mr. Englander, if uh, we could prepare to vote on this item, uh, Madam Clerk, please open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. That's unanimous. It passes. And, Mr. President, for clarification, they have, uh, Council has just adopted uh, the revised committee report, which reflects the opposition of the Van Nuys Neighborhood Council. Right. Um, that will be sent forthwith without, without objection, per Ms. Martinez as well. All right. Next item, please. Mr. President, that brings us to item 43, called Special for Cards. Herman, followed by John Walsh, followed by Juan. If John and Juan, John Juan, can line up behind the second ropes. Los Angeles, the reason for this apprehension and conviction of the persons responsible has to do with the Caucasian racism of our elected officials not taking immediate action in response to this issue. You, Mr. Weezar, and you, Mr. Englander, must Please address the council provide the in needed safety and concern for the public. A $50,000 is chump change. It should be $100,000 so that we can find and put behind bars those who are convicted in the apprehension of the racist, discriminatory action based on this motion to offer the reward of information leading to the apprehension and conviction of persons responsible. Snitches get stitches, and you ought to stitch it. One minute. Keep it. Um... Honorary, honorary members of this glorious place of bullshit, uh, I would like to address this bullshit society about all these kidnappings and murders and things that are going on. If we all had enough, if we all had a little place to live, None of this bullshit will be happening. Believe me, when you spread the butter evenly on the bread, the bread tastes evenly delicious. So 
if you keep on spreading bullshit on your bread, we will all be tasting bullshit. Stay on the subject. The Last subject morning. is... Last warning. All these rewards will do nothing. They will do nothing because uh, we need a better society where nobody needs to go kidnapping anybody else for money, for gain. You have basically kidnapped all the homeowners with all your regulations and all your red tape. So you are the real kidnappers. You are the biggest kidnappers. And you will never stop being the biggest kidnappers of the human race. Completely off topic. All right, so you're off topic, so you're done. And uh, that was your final warning, so John your Walsh, time is up for the meeting. Four, appearance four. Okay, this one is much different from any of the others. The others were for murders. This one's $50,000. This one came through in four weeks. Who is... Now, the L.A. Times has a story, and they're sitting on it. Edwin V. Notice the actual victim's name for the first time is not printed here in the agenda or anywhere else because the victim, which you call alias, the alias of Edwin V, letter V, period, is afraid that if his name appears anywhere, that the people who kidnapped him will murder him not stitches, slice his throat from ear to ear. What's going on here? You have no... If it's important enough for the LAPD to offer $50,000 without a murder, who was he? How long? And I'm going to research this. But the Times could do it. They're not going to do it. Who was this person? Who was he? Where was he? How long was he? Was he tortured? Where is Edwin V? Who is Edwin V? I just want people in the world to understand. This city's out of control. The, uh, the, the police are totally racist. And, uh, and if HollywoodHighlands.org, and I just want to say, if you bring children here, the, the mayor will use the F word in front of them. Thank you for your compassion. No, no more applauding. And uh, that was the last warning on that. That's disruptive. Um, and... Uh, and that'll conclude public comment on this item. Seeing no speakers on the queue, we'll open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay. Where does that take us? Mr. Clerk? Mr. President, would you like to recess the regular meeting and go into the special? We'll go ahead and do that now. Very good, sir. Um, Bloomingfield, Bonabus, Gaino, Cedillo, Angler, Fuentes, Wizar, Caresco, Corian, LaBanche, Martinez, O'Farrell, Parks, Price, West, and 13 members present, and a quorum, Mr. President. All right. It's a special meeting. We'll go ahead and take one item for public comment, Mr. Herman. N Mr. President, pardon me. Items 49 and 50 are now before you. Ten votes are required for consideration. Uh, okay. Please open the roll for consideration on those two items. Close the roll. And tabulate the vote. Oh, actually, on, on and, and Mr. President, I'm, I'm now being told that there's been a request to continue both of those matters to July 2nd. Okay, then that'll be the order. Those will be continued to July 2nd. No public comment necessary then for this particular meeting, and that should conclude this, that first No, mission. no, we, we, oh, we still, we still have one. item 51, sir. Correct. Um, so 51, we'll take public comment on 51, and we'll do one minute for those as well. Herman. And Mr. President, in regards to that matter, there is a re among the 15 suspects. I say to you, Michael and Fuhr, on this report number R14-0276, dated June 17, 2014, is this. We do not want catering carts that are poisoning us and making us fat. And I won't point to people who are gaining weight in here. However, we must do something to make the responsibility of traffic control accessible for those people who are disabled, elderly. You cannot put a vehicle for a special event 24 hours, seven days a week in a public residential area whatsoever. 
Yes, you will get a permit. You will have notification of a sign. And Michael Fuhr will handle this in open transparency for the public. For I, Mr. Kikorian, and you, Mr. Englander, speak on behalf of the people as Plato. Keep your one second. And Mr. President, again, for this matter, there is a revised ordinance. Uh, that's item 51 that has been circulated is now before council for its consideration. All right, we've got some uh, children entering our chambers. Terrific. Which means that I'll put... Uh, Let's see, the next one, Ted Owens. Hi, my name is Ted Owens. Uh, this is in regard to item 51 with the parking permits uh, around Solano Canyon in the Dodger Stadium area. Um, Oscar Delgado, the uh, Dodger representative, uh, mentioned that uh, we're going to have a, a, a bump in Dodger attendance from 2.8 million to 4 million this year. Um, parking is a big issue. Um, I'm one of the uh, lucky ones in my neighborhood. I have a driveway, a lot of our old, older homes. My house was built in 1941. I have the newest home on my street. Most of the homes, probably about 99% of the homes in the area, or very old, they don't have driveways, they have no parking. So when there's a Dodger game, no one has a parking place. And really, it's, it's not unreasonable to come home from work and find a parking space within maybe a few houses from your home. I mean, you, you shouldn't have to drive around for 20 minutes looking for a parking space. Many of the people, they come home, and there's no place to park anywhere. And this is becoming a bigger problem every year. I've been in my neighborhood for 16 years. And um, uh, this was three years after they closed the Scott Avenue um, exit, which ironically was closed because the fire department requested it. Now it's open again. So um, please, as I told Mr. Cedillo, um, he, and he graciously agreed, he okay. said that thank, we just I, want to I'm park sorry. in front of our house. That's right. thank, thank you very much. I didn't realize that time, your time was up. I'm sorry, please don't yell from the, uh, from the chambers. I goofed up. There was no special agenda. Did, did I didn't. This, uh, I didn't uh, I, uh, know. The with all due respect, um, you got to fill out a card to speak, and unless I have your card, um, all the cards have already been submitted on this item. Thank you. Please step back to your seat. The sergeants will show you back to your chair. Yvette. Gragada. Gragada. I hope I got that right, ma'am. Uh, good morning. Yes, my name is Yvette Grajeda. Um, I lived in the Solano Canyon uh, for 19 years, and there's been a lot of growth in L.A., and one of the things that we've experienced was change with this growth, um, one of them being the success of the L.A. Dodgers team, which I'm very proud of them. Um, but with this growth and change, there is a lot of traffic in our neighborhood, and because of the parking uh, situation, there's sometimes no um, spots for my neighbors to park, and it, it is really putting a hardship on us when we come home from uh, a long day of work or running around with our children, getting them to those after-school activities. Um, so I really urge this council to give our neighborhood an opportunity to request this special event um, parking permit. Is that time? Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Lydia Marino. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. President and council members. Um, I'm here also from the Solano Canyon area and as my neighbors have expressed uh, we're very close and we're very good neighbors of the um, beloved Dodgers um, they are doing great and wonderful they have a great attendance and what it is doing to our community is 
uh, because of the traffic and because of the attendance, they, I, I feel that the fans find it very easy to just park on our streets. My home was built in 1909. So were most of my neighbors. Uh, most of our houses don't have driveways or garages. So it is up to us to park in front of our houses. Uh, when you come home and you have people that are tailgating, uh, scalpers, uh, your fences are being used uh, to, to uh, display their, their goods. Um, you know, it's really disheartening for us. Uh, we want to be able to just come home and, and park in front of our houses. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if I could have, uh, is it Yvette? Followed by Donna Humphrey. No, you turned your card in too late, dear. If we could have uh, Yvette, Donna Humphrey, and there's a grant. I, is it Nicole Grant? P.J. Flynn? Or Mitchell, did you already call these? So please come forward. And just identify yourself, please. Hi, my name is Michelle Grant. Um, I, own, ah. I own a gourmet food truck. I've been in the gourmet food truck industry for the last, since 2009. I also uh, help to organize uh, food truck events um, around the city. Overall, I'm very supportive of the ordinance as it stands. I do have some questions and some concerns that I, I would really like to see if there's any way of addressing before this actually gets voted into law. Um, the first thing is, um, in the ordinance as it stands right now, um, it's requiring that uh, the sponsor um, have a special have a business license. A lot of times, the special event permits, uh, the special events are run by um, PTAs or um, block parties and things like that. Those kinds of organizations aren't necessarily going to have a business license. The trucks uh, that would be there would. But um, to ask those block parties to have it, uh, you know, neighborhoods and things like that, I think is unreasonable. Um, and then the other major question I have is how many vehicles. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Identify yourself. Hi, I'm PJ Flynn. I'm the owner of Game On Gourmet Food Truck. I've been in business for two years. Overall, I do support this, but there are a lot of details that I don't think are sorted out, such as how many vehicles. Uh, constitute an event? How many trucks? Um, what if something happens spontaneously? I park on Wilshire Boulevard, four of the trucks show up. Is that an event? Do we all get fined? Is there going to be a grace period before this goes into effect? Because a lot of food truck owners don't know about this right now. Um, what kind of fiscal impact do you think this is going to have on the city of Los Angeles? Buying permits, but also enforcing the law. And how is the law going to be enforced? Uh, my last question would be, will there be a cap, a number of permits that an individual or an organization can purchase within the year? Because without that, individuals and organizations can have a monopoly on certain areas. And that is obviously a huge concern to food truck owners. Thank you. No, thank you for coming. Uh, next, please identify yourself. Good morning. My name is Donna Humphrey, and I'm the co-chair of the Abbott Kinney Merchants Association, part of the Venice Chamber of Commerce. We have a first Friday event that involves food trucks that oftentimes are 50 or more trucks on the street in a very um, crowded area. The, there's an unsafe um, element. We've been notified by police and fire that they're very concerned about public safety. I'm here to tell you that I am in support of this ordinance. I spoke yesterday at the Transportation Committee. And today I am here to request that the urgency clause is enacted with this ordinance as we have very busy summer months coming with thousands of potential people and um, we are very concerned about public safety. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I'm uh, Matthew Geller and I'm still looking for Yvette. Last name begins with a G. Yes, sir. Oh, you already spoke? I missed you then. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, uh, we've been working with the Abbott Kinney Merchants Association and the Granada Hills Chamber of Commerce to, to get this ordinance through. Um, as a representative of the Food Truck Association, uh, we know that food trucks have been an incredible addition to the culinary landscape. But when it comes to things like um, uh, these on-street uh, events, it's really important that the community has a say and they're able to do things uh, in a safe uh, manner that keeps the public um, you know, protected. 
Um, I, I too am concerned about fees. I think with this type of ordinance, it's not going to be used unless the fees are reasonable. So we're we're, we're very we're, we're concerned about that, but we think that um, the city is going to make the, the right choice. But we're also really behind the urgency clause. Uh, you know, the Abikini First Friday draws 10 to 15,000 people. It hasn't really been organized. It's been kind of a um, thrown together event over the past six years. And getting this uh, ordinance going right away will help protect uh, the public throughout the summer. Thank you, sir. Mr. Walsh, followed by Mr. Akala. John Walsh blog in HollywoodHighlands.org. Although I say, point out that minority communities are treated poorly, when you're in the way of the L.A. Dodgers, it doesn't matter whether you're black, white, or brown, you're being treated as if you're third world, all these white people. All that counts is the Dodgers. Your neighborhood means nothing. And getting up here and speaking means nothing. The only way you can fight them, if it is unbearable in your neighborhood, is to hire a lawyer. There are plenty of lawyers. It's going to take a few thousand dollars. Otherwise, you're going to have a 13 to nothing vote. I know what it's like to have drunken people in my neighborhood, and I know what you have to put up with. If you sue the Dodgers and you sue this corrupt city council, you will get somewhere. Otherwise, you deserve what you get. Crap. You deserve to be treated. If you don't fight, open up your white wallets and hire a lawyer. HollywoodHighlands.org. Mr. Akala, and I'd like to rem re just remind you, we do have some Boy Scouts in the room. Well, are you saying about bad words or bad deeds? I'm saying staying on the subject and watch, be sensitive. Right. The Dodgers, he's right. They are kings of L.A. Never mind about the people. And never mind about the bullshit that the city... Okay, thank you. Stay on the subject. This has... That has nothing it, to do with the subject. It has to do with uh, Dodger Stadium's food trucks. I appreciate food trucks myself. I love burritos. I love tacos, and they do a great job. No, go ahead. They're only allowed, like, maybe three roach legs per taco. Okay, no, now you're off the subject. Thank you very much. And I apologize to the young people that are here. Uh, let me go to the members now. Uh, Mr. Krikorian, and please quit dis well, just, uh, disrupting just, the meeting. You're talking right now. You are not okay. on the queue. I just see your name, Mr. Krikorian. Oh, not on this topic. I just want to do my introduction when you're ready. Oh, okay, so I will do that right after this. Mr. Bonin. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, colleagues, I heard this uh, in a uh, special tea committee meeting the other day where I was a, a, a committee of one. Uh, committee moves so much faster that way. Uh, this is a, a, a motion, motion for Mr. Uh, uh, Englander, and uh, one of the things it does, it primarily addresses uh, one of the problems we've had with a, a, a concentration of food trucks for special events. Uh, in places in Mr. Englander's district and in mine, we've had wonderful events where food trucks have come out and, and brought a great community spirit, uh, but because they're not officially deemed special events, they will show up or have scouts show up hours in advance and take up the parking spaces that rightfully belong to the local business community or, or residents. Uh, so what this does is creates a special event process uh, that does not require or necessitate a street closure. Uh, so it, it uh, creates a way for the food trucks to have spaces when they need them, but, but preserve them for the business community. Uh, Mr. Englander and his staff uh, did some very good work on this. This is a new phenomenon, and this is not the end of the solution. This is the beginning of it. Um, uh, I think we're going to find ways in which this works, ways in which uh, there's still some holes in it. So we're going to, I agreed uh, to have this back in committee for quarterly updates uh, and put a sunset on it so we'll have a forced mechanism by which to uh, uh, revise it and fix it. Um, and uh, so uh, just officially, because uh, the original ordinance distributed didn't accurately reflect the committee report, I'm moving that the communication from the chair of the Transportation Committee be amended to substitute the ordinance that has been circulated and is before you now in place of the ordinance on file. Um, the new ordinance more accurately accurately reflects uh, the direction of the committee chair and uh, the uh, language of the report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bonnet. 
Mr. Uh, Englander, I have two other speakers. Do you want me to move you to last to close? Okay, so let me go to Mr. O'Farrell. Terrific. Is this me? Yes. Okay, thank yes. you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. President, I, uh, I want to thank you, uh, Mike Bonin, uh, and Mitchell Engl Englander for your years of work on this. And, and Mike, a committee of one gets things done, as they say. My, my mentor once told me that. Uh, no, this is, this is great, and I want to really thank the, the committee for your work on giving my constituents an additional tool. Uh, we've been working very closely with the Dodger organization for the past several months, uh, and uh, uh, as, a, as a Dodger fan myself and as a, a sports fan here in Los Angeles, I uh, just want to you know, state for the record, this is not punitive against the Dodger organization. Uh, the, the, the contributions they make to the city uh, the economic impact they make is very positive and felt uh, by all of us. Um, they uh, are um, working with my office and with my colleague Gil Cedillo's office on, on ways in which to partner and, and, and uh, resolve some of the traffic uh, issues. And it's been a very good working uh, relationship we've developed over the past many months. This, uh, this urgency clause gives my constituents who live in some of these substandard uh, streets that were built pre-World War II. Uh, we have streets that have no driveways at all. They're accessible by stair steps only or pathways. Um, and uh, I want to make sure that my constituents have a new tool that they can use uh, to reserve some parking for when they return home from work. Uh, several of my constituents who have called my office are single women who live along these uh, streets and uh, uh, accessible only by a, a sidewalk. And I want to give them uh, an additional tool. It's an opt-in. Uh, it's not a punitive approach whatsoever, uh, and I'm really happy that the, the Dodgers have made more of their parking lots available uh, to the general public. They've lowered some of their prices, opening their lots earlier. So uh, it's been a, a great working relationship we've developed, uh, and I'm, I fully support uh, this ordinance as amended uh, and providing, like I said, tools for constituents who live around Dodger Stadium uh, to be able to safely park uh, with greater ease uh, than ever before. This is kind of the tool that I've been waiting for. Uh, and I think that the constituents uh, are affected uh, will, will find this very beneficial to their quality of life. So, so I thank you, and I thank the Department of Transportation uh, as well, uh, Brian, all of your work, and City Attorney's Office for working on, on uh, these uh, amendments. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Cedillo. Mr. Cedillo. Yes, I, I'm uh, happy to, to support this proposal. Uh, as been, has been indicated, we have been working with the Dodgers. <clears throat> you know, Mr. President, when I was elected, there was a lot of concerns, and some of my constituents are here, brought to me about the challenges with respect uh, to uh, the Dodgers. They are a private business. Uh, they are the team of Los Angeles. Uh, they have a long, uh, rich history here uh, in, in, in our community. Uh, I'm pleased to support this because the the new proposal has removed all the disparaging language that was uh, in this uh, initial proposal. And we, as my colleague has said, we have met with the Dodgers and continue to work with them on a long list of mitigations to address what is inevitable. Uh, you cannot have uh, 80 uh, nights of, or nights and days of, of baseball, uh, a stadium of 50,000 people without, uh, that's sold out without having traffic. So that's, that is inevitable, but we have worked hard to mitigate it, and we've worked hard to bring equity so that <clears throat> people recognize that access to the stadium isn't just uh, uh, going to come from uh, the Northeast, but it should come from the entire area, because everybody comes through from the entire area to access uh, the stadium. So I'm very pleased to, to, to uh, support this. Uh, I want to be very clear, though, that, that the application here uh, is an application that the Dodgers would have to apply for, not that would come from residents in the community. And so uh, this, this proposal was focused around food trucks. Uh, it seems to uh, have grown a little bit to, to uh, uh, address concerns that, that uh, are perceived to address concerns that, that residents have around the stadium. But I, I want to be very clear that, that people aren't given the wrong impression uh, that, in fact, that we continue to work with the Dodgers on a series of mitigations and that these permits would have to be applied for by the Dodger enterprise. It's for them 
to make that determination themselves, uh, them and them only. I thank you. Thank you. Mr. Englander to close. Thank you. Ten years. That's how long it took this body before us to actually pass a special events ordinance. What was left out of that um, was non-event events, unplanned events, spontaneous events, events where people come together, chambers, food trucks. The easy thing to do in this case, quite frankly, would have been to put no oversized parking signs and close it down. But the community in Granada Hills didn't want that. This is the largest food truck gathering in the city of Los Angeles, and we welcome everybody to come. We've worked very closely with the Granada Hills Chamber. We've worked very closely with the old Granada Hills Group, the neighborhood councils in the area, the local businesses, the community. We've added uh, pedestrian walkways to make it more safe and uh, a crosswalk. Just a few weeks ago, we illuminated beacons so it's safer for folks to cross the street. This is a great place where people gather and get out of their homes and enjoy each other's company in the neighborhood and the community. It gives them a sense of community. Local businesses have started up because of it, and it's been a great positive thing. So we did what was going to be the tough thing, but the right thing, was to come up with a new idea and a new type of permit. And I want to thank Mr. Bonin for working so diligently on this. Um, because it does encompass other areas and other things in the city get wrapped into it, as uh, Mr. O'Farrell and Mr. Cedillo have discussed. To me, this isn't about the Dodgers. It might be about Dodger dogs if they have a food truck. Um, but what this is about and what this does is the current special event permitting process will not change. Input from the community council office, city departments will have the same effect. This gives the city one way to handle parking issues that arise from special events, those that don't, again, require for a street closure. Uh, there's a lot of people to thank. The Granada Hills Grub Fest event can now continue. This amendment will allow for an organization to pull an annual permit for regular reoccurring events. Semi-permit signs will be installed during the duration of the events and it streamlines, it streamlines the process. What was happening, so you guys know, and you get a sense of where this started from, is they would send what were called scout vehicles. So you've got a very narrow um, street, if you will, that has a lot of businesses, small local mon pa shops that rely on foot traffic to park and their uh, patrons to shop, get their hair done, get their nails done, whatever the case may be a small fishing and tackle store, those kinds of local service stores that are unique to the area. And people can park and go in, do their business and leave. These scouting vehicles would park there and take up the spot all day long, knowing that the food truck event was happening that night. And they were the food truck owners that would park their personal cars there and tie up all the business spaces for the entire day. And then when the food truck would start, that car would pull out and the food truck would pull in not allowing the community to park there. The businesses were hurting and devastated during the day. It turned into food truck wars, food truck fights. Not food fights, but true food truck fights. And um, this fixes all of that, we hope, and we think it will. Um, Brian O and Hannah Lee on my staff have been working on this around the clock for a long time, and I want to thank them for their creativity and, um, and working with all the other council offices as well as the community. I want to thank uh, Mike Bonin as well, who's been a dear friend and very supportive from day one in understanding this as he's dealt with some of these same issues, particularly Laura McLennan on his staff, who has just been an angel to work with and a breath of fresh air with a lot of ideas, a lot of input, and incredibly responsive. Brian Gallagher with DOT as well, um, and, uh, and a lot of the folks in the community. And I want to thank uh, all of you for ironing out the differences because we didn't want any unintended consequences on this. We were looking at it from one specific issue, but it's hard sometimes where there's one size doesn't fit all in all areas of the city. So I think we've got something that'll get us there. I've got one um, friendly amendment to the sunset clause, if I could, and that is, uh, Mr. Bonin, if you'll allow it, six weeks prior to the sunset that it automatically be put on the T committee agenda prior to that sunset so we make sure and ensure that does, that time doesn't just come by and go 
and it sunsets, but we have a time to weigh in on it. Okay, with that, uh, he seconds it. I ask for your aye vote. Thank you. Okay, let's prepare to vote on this item. Let us, let us open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay, at this time I want to adjourn. And Mr. President, I'm yes. sorry, for clarification, that we've adopted the uh, recommendations of the Transportation Committee report as amended to include the uh, revised ordinance, uh, the ordinance and uh, Councilmember Englander's um, instruction to have the sunset clause scheduled in committee six weeks prior. Okay, before I adjourn, did you need something, Mr. Englander? Just that he asked me to go forth with. Okay, without objection, that'll be the order. Okay, Mr. Clerk, let's adjourn this meeting go back into the regular meeting and I'd like to call on Mr. Kokorian. Thank you very much Mr. President. Just wanted to take a moment to uh, welcome and acknowledge the pres presence of uh, some Weeblo Scouts from uh, PAC 311 in my district who are in the back. If we could uh, ask them to stand up for a minute. It's, uh, we're joined by Cook, Devin, Gabriel, James, Nolan, and Zachary. They're here um, learning about city government. They've taken a tour of City Hall. They've uh, been listening uh, patiently to this debate. They're all learning about the First Amendment and people's right to speak. And they're also learning that sometimes people might uh, stretch the limits of those rights. But uh, in any event, we're very glad to have them here and, and welcome them. Good to have you here, guys. Thank you very much. All right, let's give them a better round of applause than that. Come on. Fantastic. All right, that now takes us to uh, the fun type time of the day. General public comment. We might want to dismiss the kids for this part of the agenda. as uh, this is rated a whole different way. Okay. So with that, Mary Ann Fogler. There's a lot of changes here, and unfortunately, I can't be in touch with it as much because the uh, valley is 30 miles away from here, and Matt Dowd, uh, in my opinion, shouldn't have gotten paid that kind of money. And what I've read, I know they got a dollar out of it but because the lawyer took a lot of it, but the fact of the matter is that these people should never have gotten this money, and you people made it possible because you allowed the... They allowed him to throw Michael Hunt out of here, and you should, if you have the money to do that, why aren't you putting our video conferencing on in the valley so that people can be heard? Fact is, now I didn't get to speak on objection to, what do you call, trying to block off Dodger Stadium to public parking. I understand the, the people, they should be out of there like a certain time. The people can come home and park, but to, to you know, these are the sort of uh, 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 items and issues that I, I like to address, and unfortunately, I'm limited. And also, the fact is that you have these kidnappings and murders on here, always the rewards on here, that the fact is I don't see anybody paying attention to me here. Um, uh, Mr. Koretz, thank you. That uh, the fact is, is that we should not allow our guns to be given it to be bought back. We have to be aware of what's going on now in the Middle East. ISIS in Iraq and Syria were making very bad choices here, folks, uh, to ban our guns and to, to uh, complicitate to the gun, gun control people who, who use emotionalism to the fact is that my children, our children are killed by guns. We should hate them, guns. No, we're not. We should not realize that is the people that are behind it. We need to address this issue. That means a death penalty. Um, and uh, 
just to let you all know, I did call a minute. The clerk had put two on the clock, but it is a minute for general public comment because we have more cards than time, and I want to make sure that we get through everybody in an interest of fairness. Uh, and uh, so I didn't change it. I made it earlier, and if you don't want to speak, you don't have to at all. Um, Candido? Good morning, fine sir. Candido Maris, proud, proud resident of the 12th District, along with Mr. Jim Piper. And again, proud, proud resident because, Mr. Sir, you serve our district very well. That's why I can spend so much time in Van Nuys. Uh, the one thing I've said is I've had a love affair with Van Nuys, and it's because of the people. There's a wonderful man by the name of Rodolfo Diostino who's in the hospital of St. Joseph. He's in a coma, and I hope that you'll pray for him. Uh, but it's people like Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Agostino that... Uh, that we like about, well, that's what we like about Van Nuys. For those of you who don't know, he's the priest at St. Elizabeth, and he is the one that started our food bank there, and, and last year we served over 15,000 people. Uh, Ms. Martinez is gone, but I hope that we don't have to deal with the same situation when it comes to Ms. Monica Benavides. For two years we've come to this council. I know Ms. Martinez is working hard on it. I hope that we don't have to see her in a hospital or in a situation where uh, she won't be able to be there for her own uh, celebration of what she's given back to the city. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Always good to see you. Candace Graham. Candace Graham. What a great name, by the way. Candace Graham. Good morning. Hi, good morning. It seems like I was called out of order. Could I have Mr. Hui, who had been waiting a long time before me? I came last, so if you don't mind. The, the, the cards are not in any specific order, ma'am. I so. didn't know. Okay, dear City Council, I recently had to get a restraining order against LAHD and HCID. Two wrongs don't make a right. I have um, been and clients have been retaliated against, harassed, antagonized, discriminated, double jeopardy, intimidation, extortion, manipulating the courts, uh, and contempt of court and doing malicious prosecution. You know I don't come here unless there's really a serious reason, and I consider breaking the law a serious reason. As I stated before, um, a class action lawsuit before a class action lawsuit actually hit the city of Los Angeles. I told you it would happen. And these are only the start to things to come because now they're, thank you. Great, thank you very much. Donna, Donna Perlman. I say I don't like that uh, the special agenda over there on 51 wasn't brought to my uh, uh, knowledge, so I can. Uh, so it was hard to speak on that. So we didn't get to speak anyway. And you don't allow the valley to speak in video conferencing, which means you don't. There's a lot of people in the valley. To, uh, you took away their right to speak, and uh, and you, uh, you gave all that money to uh, Matt Dowd. And uh, you don't don't fix our sidewalks or streets. And uh, we must have our ability to arm ourselves uh, because uh, the ISIS is coming and they're bringing people to, to destroy America. So we have to have the ability to arm ourselves. Instead, we have this mayor who uh, it's not, uh, you know, you have to think about we want goodwill between us and New York. And it doesn't help with uh, you don't even know when had a banter, Mr. Garcetti. And he says that they were just, uh, having gr uh, pinks is like, uh, gr makes grays look like a steaming pile of garbage. Not right, not right. Thank you right. so much. Janet Hop. No relation to Richard. Yeah, I, I, he, I uh, know his heart's in the right place, but... He doesn't have uh, the best uh, reputation, and I didn't want you to think that I'm related to him. Um, I spoke to you earlier. I am a Van Nuys Neighborhood Council executive member, uh, a board uh, board member, and um, budget advocate. I am also here on behalf of those who live in Van Nuys because I am a proud resident for 38 years. Um, I've lived for, and I, I hate to tell you this because now you know how old I am, 60 years in the city of, uh, or I should say in, in the valley, 
Uh, I lived for a number of those years in Canoga Park and then in the, the remainder since I've been married in Van Nuys. And I'm here to tell you that I too would like to see the video conferencing back there. I know you know there's you know, very little money and as a budget advocate I'm aware of how much money there is and let me say this really quickly, we would like to have more input. We don't want to be disenfranchised and thank you for your time. I love you guys. And thank, thank Mrs. Martinez. She's great. Thank you so much. Very kind words. Brian Barajas. All right, uh, LaRouche, Hillary Clinton, Spingazi revelation means Obama must be impeached immediately. Um, there's a book out by Edward Klein named Blood Feud, where he depict, depicts uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, aide who basically revealed that Obama ordered Hillary Clinton to lie um, for the Benghazi situation. Okay, so that means, as somebody told me, it's the smoking gun. Uh, but they, I think uh, the problem here is that you, when you're trying to educate a society, when you have a collapse in mentality amongst people, it becomes difficult as Christianity depicts that people who love to kill especially in times where people are confused, they will come after LaRouche. Brian. Got another Brian? Okay. Bill, who are we? Uh, good morning, Mr. Council President, members of the LA City Council. My name is Bill Huey. I'm the president of Fair Housing Coalition. I have some mind-blowing news for you. The LAHD, you know, when they do building inspections, they always cite landlords, even when tenants do the damage. And they, their policy is, well, that's our policy in L.A., that's the law in L.A. Guess what? They're lying. There are state laws in the state of California that spell out tenants' obligations, their duties, and what can they, they can be cited for. So all those people have been put in REAP, they've been prosecuted by the city, it's done illegally. Our lawyer just won two cases, and, and the LHD says the judge didn't know what they were ruling on, so they are ignoring it. We're going to have to run a media campaign and organize the landlords. A lot of lawsuits are coming. The city should get very proactive. I have a copy of our report. The LHD is violating California state law for about 10 years. So all these re-prosecutions have been illegal. And if I can give it to the officer, I can give it to you in case any councilman want a copy. Great. Thank you so much. The officer will come get that from you. Thank you. Antonio Ramirez, is she here? Yep, there you are. Hiding over there. Sorry, you start at the time. Um, hello? Can I call your name? Yes. I'm sorry, you didn't tell me that I, I didn't even get to the microphone. I'm, time I'm, is that yours. That is unfair. That is, that is biased. You didn't tell me that you started the clock. Okay? Could I, I, I demand that you give me my full one minute. You well, cut down from two minutes to one minute. Well now noted. you cut me less than one minute. When we call your, your name, minute. your clock will start. So it's still ticking. No, I, I'm being denied the rightful time. The We're time talking is yours. about fairness and correctness. When you, when you do your business duties, do it fairly and objectively. Can you handle that? Okay. Tell me that you started the clock. I'm walking over to the microphone, and you had already the clock starting. You call that fairness? Is that what you want to show the city? How you conduct businesses? Um, you, you cut me off for less than one minute. You cut me off less than one minute. What kind Thank of business you are you doing? Show the people how you run the. How Thank you. Run. you. Just for the record, you did talk past your time as well, and um, and with that, if uh, if you do walk up and you, you talk behind the podium to somebody else, your clock is is is, is starting. See, look, Juan's all ready, and your card wasn't even about to be called yet. But since you're there and you're ready, Juan, it's all yours. I'm always ready for you, bullshitters. You are the biggest one. You keep stealing everybody's time every time you become the president. Your little tweet, 
You know, you look like a little runt. You, in public comment, you will not address any one specific oh, member. Okay. Um, I am sorry, sir. You are the most righteous, uh, et cetera. Okay, et that's cetera. your last warning on that. You won't address okay. one specific member. Anyway, it's my idea that you guys are doing a terrible job because you all think you're in your ivory towers and you're the kings when you're really the servants. You keep ripping us off with all kinds of uh, violations, all kinds of bullshit, uh, tickets, all kinds of parking. Nobody's ever voted for parking. So you are a bunch of bandits with a license. Thank you. Herman. Judge Rolf M. Trouw, R O U L F T R E U. General public comment. It is illegal and unconstitutional to take advantage of current tensure laws, which you violated, Mr. Weezar, and some of you as well, with your special. Again, we interest. won't address any one specific. Contribute to member. the disproportion of law that you have created an unequal educational system, jackass. That's what you did, an unequal system for us minorities, our children, and us educated, dumbass teachers, you want to call us. But we're smarter than you, big ears, as you listen in, because I am tired of teaching, for it is a noble profession, complicated by many political nonsense and bullshit. So take it up the F, Mr. Pee-wee. How you like that one? Mr. Walsh, bring it home. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org. As you know, the mayor used the F word in front of children directly and also on live, t live TV in front of millions of children. He said, lighten up, it's okay. So you have the right, when these uh, uh, scouts come in, you should explain to them that you can be uh, potty mouthed at uh, the mayor as allowing all of you to be potty mouthed. It's now politically correct. Uh, you don't hear those words out of my mouth here if, uh, uh, in front of you. But uh, let's put it down. And Glenn Dake, he's not here, but, you know, he is the mayor's uh, lover, and we wish him a lot of luck in his high-paying job at MWD. Officer Liger killed Officer Gaines in cold blood. He admitted it the other uh, few months ago while he was lecturing recruits on how to kill black people. He said he wants to kill them by the truckload. That's what he said. And I'm telling you right now, HollywoodHighlands.org. Great. Thank you. Thank you all for the enlightening comments. Um, with that, uh, general public comment is concluded. Do we have any announcements, colleagues? Seeing none, do we have any motions for posting and referral? Yes, sir, we do. Surprise, surprise. Okay, we'll consider those posted and referred. Any adjourning motions? We do. So if we can get everybody in council chambers to please rise for adjourning motions. Council Member O'Farrell. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, yesterday we lost a sleeping giant in the entertainment industry, and that is the great character actor Eli Wallach, who come, came from the Method School in New York, uh, originally born in Brooklyn, was 98 years old, made some of the most... Uh, indelible images uh, in film over his 70-year uh, career, uh, including uh, The Misfits, which is my favorite film of all time. Uh, Eli Wallach was one of the most nimble actors ever. He never received an Academy Award nomination, but he was the recipient of, of Tony's and, and other awards in his long career. Um, he's one of, really, one of the very last from the golden era at, at that advanced age, almost made it to 99 years old. Uh, was married to uh, another fine actress, Ann Jackson, since 1948. Uh, married to her for 66 years. Um, Eli Wallach, it should just be noted, uh, made such a profound impact on a film in the latter part of the 20th century, and he will be missed and should be remembered uh, and treasured for the great talent he gave us uh, in film. Eli Wallach uh, passed away at the age of 98 yesterday. He rests in peace. Thank you. Mr. Koretz. 
Thank you, Mr. President and colleagues. Uh, I ask that we adjourn in memory of Stephanie Kolek, who passed away last Wednesday in her home state of Delaware at the age of 90. Although she lived far from our city, she had a huge impact here and on Americans across the nation and across the world because of uh, a notable invention that uh, she made a number of years ago. Uh, Kolek, among other things, invented Kevlar, this lightweight, stronger than steel fiber, used in bulletproof vests while she was working as a chemist at DuPont Company. Then and throughout her long life, she was a role model for women in a heavily male field and was indeed the only female employee at DuPont to be awarded the company's Medal for Outstanding Technical Achievement. Without her invention, thousands of the officers that ensure our public safety would not receive the physical protection of their vital organs that they do today. And indeed, 3,100 police officers are members of a survivors club formed by DuPont and the International Association of Chiefs of Police to promote the wearing of body armor. The U.S. Army tweeted, rest in peace, Stephanie Kolek. Thank you for inventing Kevlar and saving so many of soldiers' lives. Oh, thank you very much. Any other members? Seeing none, colleagues, be safe out there. We are adjourned.